Okay, so can we all agree that at this point the Death Singer should just get a Nerf gun skin? For those of you who are currently unaware, very recently our chaotic neutral overlords decided to give our Red Dead reject arthritis, now forcing him to go through a 0.6 second animation delay before he can fire. Bear in mind that this happened on the same patch where both the nurse and the blight got buffed. Patch 5.3 was essentially yes, we understand that the nurse is very problematic, so in order to compensate we broke the Deathslinger's fingers. The worst part about this is that the Deathslinger was never all that strong to begin with, having no map pressure, no mobility, and no base kit slowdown. All he had was his anti-loop. In fairness, it was way too strong and completely unfair to play against, and I don't disagree with him having a wind-up time to afford some counterplay to the survivors. My issue stems from the fact that they gave him nothing to compensate for this sudden lack of power. But I'm not here today to whine about balance, and it's my job to fix your mistakes, Dad. So I'm pretty average, and this is how you play the Deathslinger. The first thing I think we should address is the slowdown meta, and the fact that the Deathslinger hates this playstyle. The best slowdown perks in the game, i.e. Ruin, Pop, Deadmans, etc. rely on either your ability to pressure multiple gens aggressively, or to get downs fast in order to effectively use said perks. The Deathslinger is innately capable of neither. But average, my games only ever last 5 minutes and survivors are just gonna shh. I'm talking now. If you wanted to have a back and forth discussion about how long you're lasting, they have a doctor for that. Hit and run is also out of the question, because whilst yes you do have the tiniest bit of slowdown in forcing survivors to men, you are still just a 4.4 speed killer, making it really hard to capitalize on survivors being injured. Hit and run works with killers that can catch survivors unaware, get a free hit, and then change targets, i.e. the Wraith and Sadako. Sadly, this just doesn't work with the Deathslinger, namely due to the fact that survivors can hear your terror radius coming a mile away, and W keying is one of your strongest counters. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wow, I just wasted five dollars, and you'd be right, but the Deathslinger does do one thing incredibly well. If you try to control the game and manage all survivors at once, you are going to lose. However, the Deathslinger is still stupidly broken in 1v1s. So, in order to make the most of our strengths, we need to capitalize on finding our first down and use that to try and snowball the rest of the game. This would mean that the Deathslinger only really needs one survivor to make a mistake in order to put the rest of the team at a significant disadvantage, allowing us to build enough momentum to win the game. This is a common tactic used by high level nurse and huntress players who don't normally run slowdown perks. Instead, they get survivors off gens by forcing them to assist downed or hooked teammates, essentially slowing down the game by abusing altruism. This does present us with a tiny bit of a problem, because because I did just tell you that the Deathslinger comes packing about as much lethality as Matthew Cote's hag, and most of the time survivors will body block for their teammates or just run away after you get that first hit. Except, what if they couldn't? Starstruck is a perk that exposes everyone in your terror radius as long as you're carrying a survivor, and lingers for 30 seconds, meaning that if you can get at least one survivor down, everybody else is fucked, because the Deathslinger's power works with the exposed status effect. Yeah, this shit! That's a basic attack. This is huge for the Deathslinger, as his power allows him to get hits on survivors incredibly consistently, and survivors tend not to run away if you break their legs. Pairing this with agitation extends its range and forces survivors who are nowhere near you to either play passively or risk dropping faster than GameStop stock. This brings us to another perk that works incredibly well with basic attacks and supplements our lethality. Save the best for last reduces the cooldown of a wipe animation by 5% for every token it gains, maxing out at 40%. We gain tokens by landing successful basic attacks on survivors, but lose them if we hit our obsession. This is actually not that big of a deal, because even if our obsession is actively trying to earn a restraining order, spearing them and then allowing them to snap the chain will injure them without the cost of removing a stack. Finally, you want to fill your fourth slot with an information perk that helps you with your snowballing. Infectious Fright will help you find more survivors after a down, and Lethal Pursuer works amazingly well in helping you find your first pick. You could also use Corrupt Intervention here if you're playing against higher level survivors who can run you effectively, as it will give you more time to find that initial down. I personally recommend that you avoid perks like Discordance, Tinkerer, or Barbecue, as you don't really have the mobility to chase people across the map, and unfortunately, whilst I really like the new Scourge Hook, it doesn't really help our game plan as you need to be more proactive as a killer here.
Speaking of a game plan, yours is really simple. You need to find a survivor fast, and as dumb as this sounds, you need to hard commit to getting that first down. I normally would advise against this, as part of playing a killer is maintaining a fair balance of pressure amongst all four survivors, and ignoring the walking highlighter that is currently teabagging the shit out of you on the other side of a pallet. That isn't the case here. It is now your personal mission to get that survivor to make best friends with the floor. Slinger shouldn't really have that hard of a time getting his first pick anyway. Like I said, he excels at just bullying one survivor at a time. Now, once you've gotten your initial survivor down, you need to have a plan as to where you're going next. And this is the crucial part. You need to find your next pick. Having agitation here is a massive clutch, because even if you don't get any info on survivors near you, you now have the ability to waltz your brokeback buttocks halfway across the map, tagging as many survivors with Starstruck as you can before needing to actually hook. So don't hook early. Unless you can actually see a survivor nearby, rather take the time to walk to a further hook and actually find your next down. You only have a very minuscule window to make your next play before you lose your momentum, so you have to capitalize here. Now, obviously this is going to be super easy if you're playing against a group of altruistic lemmings who all think that they're packing lightsabers, but sometimes you're going to have to get a little more creative and a little more aggressive with how you use this perk combo. Thankfully, even if this doesn't work out, we still have saved the best for last to fall back on for that added lethality when we need it. This brings us to the actual mechanics of playing Deathslinger, and more specifically, how to aim this piece of shit now that behavior has blessed us with Parkinson's. There is actually a massive difference between how you aimed with old Deathslinger compared to now. Namely, in that you can't really aim your shots whilst unscoped anymore. You see, previously you would just center your target in your screen, tap right click, and then immediately left click, occasionally flicking if you needed to make a correction. If you try to do that now, I'm pretty sure you'll end up with depression and a broken keyboard. Trying to aim the Redeemer whilst unscoped is almost never advisable, because by the time you're able to fire, you're aiming at thin air. It's also really difficult to track survivors during the animation, because as you scope in, both your FOV and sensitivity are rapidly decreasing. This means that you now have to adjust to an entirely different sensitivity on the fly, and unlike in other games, there's no setting that allows you to adjust for the shift. So unless you have a mouse pad the size of Matthew Cote's forehead, you are not making that flick shot. So, we're gonna have to take a page out of our console gamer guidebook and learn how to strafe shot. Strafe shotting is basically a concept where you aren't moving your camera to aim. Rather, you're relying on your own movement and the movement of your target to land a successful hit, waiting until you're lined up before taking a shot as opposed to actively tracking your opponents. This also helps the slinger deal with some high wall loops, as whilst yes, he can be incredibly oppressive over short loops, he is a little trickier to play around loops like shack or long walls, in part due to DBD's finicky hitboxes. With strafe shotting, we can actually pre-aim a corner and line up a shot with where we think our survivor is going to be, swinging around the corner as we do our scoping animation and timing it so that that we fire as soon as we see the survivor, making it incredibly difficult to react to. Another note is that the Redeemer Spear is a projectile, which means that you'll need to learn to lead your shots. Unfortunately, this takes time and practice to get good at, and there's no easy shortcut to learning it. You just have to grind out some games. That being said, I would highly recommend avoiding long shots as much as possible, as you're punished heavily for missing them, and survivors have plenty of time to react to your projectile at range. I know that it's fun to slap on the eerie coin and you ain't teabagging survivors out of the exit gate, but we're aiming for consistency and your most effective range is roughly 6 to 8 meters, and at that distance, the gun might as well be a hit scan. Now, Behavior in their infinite wisdom decided that giving a psychotic cowboy actual bullets might be a bad idea, so instead we now have to go through two-step verification in order to get a hit. When you hit a survivor with a redeemer, they will become speared, allowing you to reel them in and hit them with the basic attack. But if your ping is anything like mine, they'll still somehow end up on the other side of a wall. To compensate for this, the entity has decided that physics are more suggestions than actual laws, so your chain will not immediately break when phasing through solid matter. Instead, it will start to deteriorate rapidly, eventually leading it to snap, inflicting the survivor with deep wound and the death slinger with a hangover. You can get around this by reeling the survivor around the loop and positioning yourself to get a hit as you still have full control over the death slinger. Walking backwards will reel the survivor in faster and walking towards them will break the chain quicker. So be mindful of this when moving around a loop. You can also hit survivors through windows and over certain objects. So get a little creative here because it will often allow you to find hits in places that you had no business doing so. 
Sometimes though, if a survivor is already injured, you will need to snap the chain early with a basic attack to prevent the stun if you're not going to get a hit, as it's faster to just break the chain, reload, and try again. This is one of the things that makes the Death Singer more complex to play, so learning which loops you can effectively play around and when to break the chain early are key. There's not much more that I can teach you here that will be helpful immediately. Once again, the Death Singer does require some time and effort to learn the mechanical aspects of his kit, and it's important to remember that ultimately, he is a relatively weak killer with a high skill floor, so you're going to lose some games. But that's okay. Just keep practicing and know that when you manage to get good with this killer and this playstyle, he's incredibly powerful and rewarding to play. Or at least he will be until Behavior decides to give him another nerf. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video, and just thank you everybody in general. The support on the past two videos has been nuts, it's been insane. Uh, we've went from 60 subscribers to 300 over the course of two weeks, and I, I literally cannot thank you enough. I've wanted to do YouTube for the longest time, and finding my nation, finding what I really wanted to do, has been, has been a struggle, and hopefully I have actually found this now. And I'm very much committed to working as hard as I can, for as long as I can, to get you guys these videos out. So if there is something that you want to watch, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe if you are not already and you enjoyed this video. Uh, and let me know if you are interested in seeing a The Problem With Nurse video coming out soon. I had that idea and I think we should probably address something for the survivor's case. And the nurse is, is the best argument that I can think of as she is incredibly problematic. Uh, I'm not going to be rambling on for much more. I just really wanted to say thank you, everybody. Um, I really appreciate it. Waking up and seeing seeing that number of people who actually want to watch me yell about behavior is bullshit. Uh, grow is, is insane. I look forward to spending many, many more uh, months with you guys and seeing where this all goes. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!